So this is a sub $200 gaming PC. And to be exact, I spent $196.14 on it. But should you build it? Well, I don't know, I'll let you decide that for yourself, but I will be going over all the specs of this thing, showing you the performance of it, and then at the end, I'll give you my personal opinion on if I think it's worth it or not. Before all that though, let's have a quick word from today's video sponsor. This video is sponsored by Super CDK. If you just built a gaming PC or you're flipping computers, then you need to activate Windows on your builds. Go ahead and visit them down below. They have Windows 10, Windows 11, and even discounted game keys. Add whatever key you want to your cart. Be sure to use the discount code SPLA to save a little bit of extra money on checkout. Activating the key is super simple. Just copy and paste it straight into your window activation settings. Click activate and bam, Windows is activated. Thank you Super CDK and be sure to visit them down below. So this gaming computer was built in a recent video of mine where I set myself out a challenge to not only build a budget gaming computer, but also flip it for some profit. The main parts of this computer were all bought from one deal on my Facebook marketplace. I paid a total of $70 and I scored a motherboard, CPU, RAM, and a graphics card. Well, and the seller also threw in a case, but it was pretty dusty and old. The CPU that came with the deal is the i5-4460. Now it is quite old in 2024, and fun fact, this is the CPU that I had in my first ever gaming computer. And another fun fact, I actually bought my first ever gaming computer on Facebook Marketplace. The i5 was paired with this ASRock Z97 anniversary motherboard and an 8GB kit of DDR3 RAM. The motherboard and RAM are a perfect match in terms of color scheme, but the 8GB capacity wasn't enough and you'll see what I went with instead. Now the final part of that whole bundle is the GPU. It's basically what made the whole deal worth it. It is the EVG GTX 980 Super Clocked Edition. Now, like the old i5, this GPU is also old. It was released back in 2014 with an MSRP of $549. To me, that just seems absurd. I'm not sure how accurate it is. I kind of just looked it up. I wasn't into computers when it first launched, but now it can be had for around $60 on the local market if you were to try to buy it in 2024. Now, considering I only paid $70 and I basically got a whole computer, I would say that deal was worth it. That still left us though with needing a few things to actually build a functioning computer. We needed a case, well I guess you don't need a case, but we definitely needed a power supply and a storage drive. And also some more RAM because eight gigabytes is, I don't know, just not enough. For the case, I went with the good old DIY PC S3 BK ARGB. It's an ATX form factor with a mesh front, tempered glass side panel, and three included ARGB fans with a little controller in the back of the case that all the fans sync up to, and you just control the lights with a button on the case. It's honestly a pretty good option if you're on a budget. It can be had for around like 50 to $60, but there is a lot more options as well. Now to power this build, I scored a Thermaltake Smart BX1 500 watt 80 plus bronze unit. I only paid $25 on my local marketplace, and I thought that was a pretty good find. Now it did end up stinking like cigarettes, but it works perfectly fine. Tested it on a power supply tester. The last part to get this computer functioning is a storage drive. And for that, I just went with the good old SATA SSD. I got the Team Group Vulcan Z 512 gigabyte SSD, and I paid $34.31 on Amazon. Now with all those parts, the computer would work, but like I said, eight gigabytes of RAM is just like, I don't know, it's, it just doesn't feel right. I searched high and low on my local marketplaces for a couple days. I actually came across a 16 gigabyte kit of DDR3 for $10. Now it's not blue and all matchy matchy with the motherboard anymore, but hey, at this price point, I'd rather have 16 gigabytes of RAM. Now with all those parts out of the way, you get a little gaming computer like this. Now, if you were to just buy everything that I do have linked down below, it would just cost you around $290 if you don't shop around for good deals. But if you did take the time to shop around for good deals, you can build it closer to the $200 price tag. Anyways, let me show you the performance of this thing. I first tested out some eSports titles. In Fortnite, I ran the game at 1080p with performance mode, 100% 3D red scale, far view distance, and everything else on low. We were able to get a few kills, but honestly, I was expecting better performance. I mean, it was in performance mode. This system got an average of 87 FPS with a 1% low of 13. The next esports title was Apex Legends. I tested at 1080p with TAA turned on, medium textures, and everything else was on low. The CPU and GPU were basically being pegged at 100% utilization the whole time, 
and I would think that Apex would run worse, but it actually ran way smoother than good old Fortnite. This PC scored an average of 121 FPS with a 1% low of 91. Now the last easier to run title was GTA 5. I ran the game at 1080p with the highest settings FXAA was on, as well as the advanced graphics were all toggled on. This is the first game we were actually able to play at max settings with a respectable frame rate. After being a straight menace for a little bit, we averaged 70 FPS with a 1% low of 47. Now this little gaming PC does pretty decent against AAA titles and it'd be perfect for like Roblox, Minecraft, and I don't know, easy games like that. But what if you wanted to play more demanding games such as Warzone? Well, I tested it at 1080p with the recommended preset and it wasn't not playable. I mean, it could have been worse, but hey, it definitely could have been better too. It averaged 48 FPS with a 1% low of 30. I did try changing the recommended settings from quality to performance to see if we could get more FPS and we did achieve a little more FPS, but in my opinion, it just looks like dog shit. So it can't really handle Warzone, but what about a harder to run title like Cyberpunk? Well, 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 it was playable. I ran the in-game benchmark, of course, and yes, it was on the low preset, but by my surprise, this freaking budget beast actually achieved a 60 FPS average with a 1% low of 38. Don't ask how and don't ask why it performed better than Warzone, because I only have one answer for you, and that is Warzone sucks and you shouldn't play it. Nah, I'm just joking. Well, kinda. Warzone does suck, but hey, if you want to play it, go ahead. So after all those benchmarks, do you think this computer is worth it? Well, now that you had time to think, let me tell you what I think about it. For the first time, I'm going to say no, this is not worth it. You're probably like, what bro, you love budget computers. Yeah, I do. But I don't know, just like, doesn't feel right. If you're gonna be spending like two, three hundred dollars, you should be getting better performance than that. Like I get it, if you really want to get into PC gaming and you only have a strict budget of like two hundred dollars and you just want to do anything to get a computer, you're gonna do something, but I don't recommend you build this. Instead, I recommend just buy a use like Xbox or PlayStation and you'll get way better performance. And a lot of times you can find cheap computers around the same price point but way better specs than this, and it's just people selling their old systems and they just sell it for cheap. Now, of course, it does depend on where you're located at on this giant floating rock, but luckily for me, if I'm on Facebook Marketplace long enough, I'll find a pretty good deal. But if you still really want to get into PC gaming and you don't want to buy a used Xbox or PlayStation and you just want a computer, I recommend saving up at least $300 because then with that budget, you can get on a better platform like AM4. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and smash that like button Subscribe if you loved it. And if you want to see the whole process of me finding and buying all the parts for this computer, then go ahead and click this video next.